Okay, I think we're ready to open our meeting here. So moved by Councilor Morial, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Resolved that the agenda for the May 15, 2018 regular meeting of Council be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Moved by Councillor Morial, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Resolved that the minutes of the May 1st special meeting and the May 1st, 2018 regular meeting of Council be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? All right, I welcome everybody here tonight. Um, just We have a few delegations. First, I have to give regrets for the mayor. He is uh, away on some family uh, time, I guess you could say. Um, we have a couple delegations. So just with the delegations, I'll call you forward, and uh, I'll just let you know that you have 10 minutes with uh, each of your uh, delegations. And please uh, address any of your questions through the chair, please. So our first uh, delegation will be the Harm Committee. That's Chelsea. Okay, Chelsea. Welcome. All right, I didn't realize how formal this thing was. <laughs> it's all good. Coming out of my briefcase. But um, I brought a PowerPoint, but I guess I don't have access to one here. That's fine. So I'll just kind of lab for the time being, and I'll just go over kind of what the harm reduction, if you guys have have you ever heard of the Manitoba Harm Reduction Network? Yeah, okay. So basically they have sub-networks uh, around the province and luckily Swan River was chosen this past year. So June, July 31st I was hired as the Community Engagement Facilitator and I've been working alongside PMH with um, Primary Outreach um, Nurse Meal Lives and Public Health Nurse Ashley Tibbet. And what the whole harm reduction um, motto is to meet people where they're at and um, kind of like encouraging testing safe safe use of um, needle injections and stuff like that because there's a really high increase in Swan River particularly that that's why Swan River was chosen like people in Ontario are like hey why is Swan River so high in hep C we need somebody there so lo and behold I'm here and um, with that instead of having the people come to us to get tested. Um, we've started the health, the health Network, which stands for Heal, Empower, Learn, and Prevent, which is something we want to do in our community. We want to heal the people because the people that are using the substances are not using it because they woke up one day and be like, I'm going to be a drug, I'm going to be addicted to drugs. It's previous trauma, so how can we help that? Um, we want to empower them, so um, through our monthly meetings, we, we do something different. Like, I basically gave them a a uh, big piece of paper and I was like, what do you guys want to learn? What will make you guys feel like you're a uh, working part of the community? So they've been trained in first aid, they've been trained in naloxone. Um, we're actually putting on a community cleanup event next Wednesday where we're going to go out to the community, clean up random spots and then also looking for sharps if there's any around. Um, so like this is what the Peer Advisory Council does. We have 12 working members which is now closed, but it's been open throughout the year. And I've seen about 70 different faces of peers that have come to me to access programs, whether it's to try and get opioid replacements or um, I didn't know that, like they'll come to me and say like, I didn't know that you could get needles for free and already it's too late, they already have FC type of deal. Um, so basically my, my program, my network, and uh, Coach White sits on it along with like Debbie Burnside, um, the Friendship Center, um, what is that place, EIA, and mental health. So like we all sit on it and we just kind of get together and branch out the ideas that the peer groups give us and try and put on different things. So like we've had community in the lock zone training, um, we've had STBBI information sessions, which is sexually transmitted bloodborne infections. Um, we're also having CERC come down from Brandon, which is uh, Sexual Education Resource Center. So we have like a lot of things that are happening, and then um, one of the things we want to do is like trying to get it out there into the community, so it's not just the peers that already have so much experience and so much knowledge with the drug world. 
we want to have like everybody know so then this way if you come into contact with it what do you do um, I actually had a meeting with the school division board last night and we we're trying to see if we could integrate um, like depending on the grades obviously what would be introduced but what would you do if you found a needle because like it would be a parent's worst case if somebody was to get punctured by it so rather than waiting for it to happen like let's get it before it happens um, I don't know I, I'm all over the place because I don't have my PowerPoint but basically that's kind of like what we do throughout the year and we've only been here since July 31st when, when I was hired so after orientation and everything like that we're actually rolling along pretty fast considering that we just started the network um, and I only work three days a week too so that's an, another thing considering that uh, I work out of CMHA we have an office there in kind um, you know, if you guys have any questions feel free to ask because that's more like that's how I Let's kind of give a description, yeah. Okay, good. Councillor Sackle. So you said Swan was noted to be a bad location, a bad uh, like Canada-wide, bad Manitoba-wide. If it's Manitoba-wide, like where do we rank, I guess? Um, well, like how did we I, get identified? I can, I can get those information for you like through stats, but um, like say, for example, we just had a testing day the other day or like the other week and we had 19 people get tested and it came back 35% positivity rate. So out of 19 people, 35% is high for hep C. How do you, how do you test, like how do you, you just With blood. pick people? No, like I'm just... Like oh yeah, we tested amongst the peers, like the people who normally don't go to the off, don't go to the doctor's office to get tested because like um, they don't have a health card, they don't have ID, whatever it is. So um, somebody who doesn't want to go Basically, I need. I feel like I have an um, STBBI, book an appointment, see the doctor, get the sheet from the front lady, they see what you're getting tested, go to the hospital, go through the lab, go to the lab person, then get your results back. Like that's six people already there. So the way we did it is we put it at the back of the legion, tell your friends to come get tested. They came, 19 people came in a matter of two hours. So that's really good. Um, and then, we followed up with them afterwards. So on June 27th, we're actually have it's National Testing Day, so we're gonna do, a, we're trying to plan, and I'm not planning this, I just like facilitate with the peers. Um, they plan it, so we have a testing day on June 27th, it's gonna be at the Legion Hall. And we're gonna try to get like all different types of testing, their diabetes, STBIs, and then we're thinking of like, even a gynecologist be there just to like book testing in a more private area. Um, and it would be open to anybody, but um, we're trying to access the people here? who don't necessarily get services because of all the barriers that come with it. Councillor White and Councillor Sackle. Can you expand on that? You talked about the peers. Who are they? What's that about? The peers? Um, peers are people who are actively using substances, whether it be um, prescription pills, meth, um, alcohol, which is anybody who's, and um, we don't like to say addiction unless they say they have an addiction. We don't like to label people as that. So um, we just we just call them peers instead of saying users because who wants to be known as a user, right? Just say you're a peer. Um, and that's what our peers are. Oh, so like today I had a meeting and I had, I have 12 close, uh, it's a closed group now. It was our first closed meeting. Um, I had 12, but I had 11 show up to see if they could participate and I'm like, sorry, we're closed for our next, cause like our open ones they could come because our closed groups are more like, kind of like this, like, so, yeah. So we do the planning and then. Culture cycle. I guess, uh, any more information on the education piece? I like the education piece. I think it's very important. Like what age group were you guys, like you guys have um, a plan well, where you would start it? And yeah, well, like, um, We've started with, like this, the high school has already had CERT come down and do training this year. So this year we were just trying to get our um, peers educated so then this way we could go into the community like training and then they could say like, hey, I know firsthand, don't learn, don't do my mistakes type of deal. And then um, the people who sit on our network are, their capacity training is also built up, so. 
Councillor Dorn. Um, we've uh, the town's recently put in uh, lock boxes for for yeah. sharp disposal in the park and various other places. Is there any other places that you guys have identified that that would be useful? Oh or, yeah. Or, or, yeah. Or, or are they in the wrong place? And, and do you guys make your, your peers aware of, of the locations? Locations, where? yeah. Um, we've actually, because sharp boxes are really expensive, like not so much the the big ones, but like the little biohazard ones. So we've been giving them laundry detergent bottles that have been labeled with biohazard stickers, so them this way. And they've actually will get them from Jill Aggie or Ashley Tibbet and they'll bring them back. So they dispose of majority of their needles. Um, and that's a good thing with Swan River, like it's not labeled as bad, it's just like what can we do in order to, because like hep C is treatable, how can we stop the spread before it gets worse? Um, so yeah, they're, they're, they know and then I've also asked them that too and that's information I can share with you guys too, is like um, where, where do people use and where would we put the sharp containers? And a lot of it is on like property owners and I've uh, already engaged them to see if they would want to put one there, but they're like not really for it. They think if they put a container there that that's going to make people go there, but it's like no people are already there, it's just going to make it safer there because, so I have a list of it and then if that's something the town wants to work towards, if we want to put something um, there, like, and Neil has this guy that makes way cheaper ones and yeah, so there's work, things we could work around it. I guess it's still on the education piece there. Um, is there is there education in the schools for for the younger children to know like to let them? It seems a little, it seems like when I was in school it didn't seem to needles yeah. didn't seem to be a factor. But now that there's needles and possibly in the Legion Park and in yeah. playgrounds, do, are kids getting the proper education um, to know that they shouldn't be touching these? Should yeah. they report to the to the to the nearest teacher? Like, mm -hmm. is there? Um, I last night I met with the school division and I asked them like we need to get rolling with this because they're like well what are you asking from us and I'm like we're asking you to get this ball rolling on how do we educate the kids like nobody wants to tell their kids that but this is the reality of that we're living in so I'd rather be safe than sorry and um, Tim Mendel I think that's the superintendent's name said he had sent home letters last year with um, the children for the parents to educate their kids but in Flin Flon they're actively they're being proactive and they get in the schools and they from little kids they show them the big needle like this is no good you step back they go over like the basic everything but you know how everything has to go through agreed 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 so we've now we've had that meeting with the SVSD and we're hoping that they will move things along so we could get working together too get that information out there for the kids. And it would be age appropriate because like obviously grade nines are gonna be different than grade threes, so. Council why? Well, often we hear people concerned that if the person has a drug issue, we give them free needles. What is the economic and health advantages of making that happen? Because other people pay for their needles? Yeah. Um, the one of the reasons why, like I know lots of people will be like, well, Diabetics have to pay for their needles. How come people, how come junkies get to use needles, right? For free? Um, because HIV and Hep C is a communicable disease. That's something that can, um, it, it's treatable, but it's communicable. Um, and another thing is with, I should have brought supplies, but I didn't want to have too much stuff because I thought I'd have my PowerPoint. So um, with the supplies that we give away, it's every little piece of that thing is intended for a uh, greater purpose. So the vitamin C that's in the package for them, that's so their veins don't burst because if your veins burst, then um, that's gonna cost more treatment on the government. So over a lifetime, if you have HIV, you s the it costs the government $1.3 million if you have per HIV person. per person. So for a needle and everything that comes with it, it's about a dollar twenty-six, I believe. And then, depending on what you get, like, because different communities give out different things, so it, it's like ninety-six to a dollar twenty-six, ninety-six cents to a dollar twenty-six. And then, so basically, it's like you'd have to, if you give me a, if I give you a dollar, you're giving me seven dollars back. Basically, is what it works out to. So it's actually cheaper to supply the needles. We just need to, 
and like a lot of these people you talk to, they they are putting the needles where they're supposed to. So we give up at my meetings. I've had about seven meetings, and I've probably given about fifteen hundred needles out. And I don't know how many reports you hear of in the valley that people have found needles. Maybe like what three a year? Maybe more. More? Yeah, some of our parks area have received. Seen yeah, see, like nobody, like I haven't heard of any complaints besides from the schools, and then I never hear of anything else. So, and that's good too. If we could get that, then that goes because all the all this little information, like even the numbers of um, needles and syringes, that all goes into stats. You can get any of that information from Julie from our park staff because okay. they have had different times, peaks, and all that. Yeah, that'd be great in some of our park areas. Yeah. And then, yeah, so. Okay. Well, we you appreciate know, like everything that you've uh, come out. We have a lot of stuff. Maybe one time we can have you come back and do the PowerPoint. We'll be yeah. uh, ready for that and, and, and hear a little bit more and, mm -hmm. and uh, see what you have to present. But otherwise, you have a huge task to, to, yeah. uh, to be. I know, and it's, it's kind of a battle, too, because there's a lot of people that, um, and like, I get where they're coming from at the same time, but my biggest thing is. I I care for these people. Like I work with them. They they like want to better the community. Like they I wish I could just like snap my finger and be like, hey, you're not addicted to this anymore. But it's not that easy. Like we all do. It's previous trauma, right? So. All right. Well, thanks, Chelsea. You're welcome. And we'll do any time. And like I said, if you need any information okay. through Julie, she okay. can pass it on to you. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Chelsea. Okay, our second delegation for the night is our Northwest Regional Library uh, Committee, I guess. So if you ladies want to come forward. Can we move up two more chairs? Sure, yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I thought you were going to get out of it, didn't you? Yeah, they thought, they thought. <laughs> hey, Kathy, if I can get you to maybe introduce some of your uh, friends here tonight with you that's I, I don't think we all know who everybody is so i'm kathy storm i'm the head librarian you all know that yes. <laughs> this is uh this is sandra yakovich the needle library head librarian okay. glorious Desanko. i represent the swan valley west i'm a member at large i am not the official spokesperson for the library board but i have a little bit of things i have to discuss with you all okay. And I'm Julie Schneider, and I'm also on the library board representing the municipal. Okay, well, take a seat, and then I'll let you uh, begin. I think Kathy has some handouts. Yeah, She's okay. Yeah, so Can I just start this? Because you're only yes, doing yeah, certain minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you, then you don't have to. Stand. I don't have to stand. Oh, no. Deputy Mayor and Council, thank you for allowing us to speak to you all this evening. The Northwest Regional Library Board has concerns regarding the Town of Swan River's proposed funding, which will definitely put the board in an operational deficit. Please leave, allow me for the next few minutes to emphasize how important these libraries are, and that's Canito and Swan, to uh, how vital they are to the health and the well-being of, of our communities. They are a continuous source of information, education, and recreation, and are the hub of each and every one of their communities. I'm going to center on Swan River Library because, after all, this, this deficit, and it is a big deficit, is going to affect Swan River more than it will Benito. Because Swan River Library is open 45.5 hours per week, where Benito is open 22. Six days per week they're open. Benito is open um, five days a week? Five, four, four days a week, excuse me. And Swan River has an average of two to three people working per day, where Benito has one to two. Okay. Now these are the programs and the services that are in addition to the staff duties. Uh, so I'm going to run this by very fast. Um, they coordinate and run two story time programs for preschoolers. They run the summer reading program eight sessions a week in July and August. They do a weekly Saturday youth program from October to May. Have a regular school, daycare and Aboriginal Head Start visits. They coordinate and supervise distant education exams. They have classes on computers and wireless devices on a very regular basis. They average about 11,500 informational travels actions a year. There are a lot of people coming in the library asking different things. They come in and they want to know um, if their membership is due. 
if their books are overdue. They phone and they'll ask Kathy, do you repair books? Like, those are all informational transactions. They take time away from staff from doing their duties. They run a monthly a promotional. They run monthly promotional activities. They have a traveling library for those individuals that are unable to physically come to the library. They offer audio books for the visually impaired. They instruct patrons on access how to use audio books through a, a website called Nels. It's very similar to CNIB. They order books from other libraries and they send out their own books through interlibrary loans. They instruct patrons how to use and download e-libraries Manitoba, that's electronic books, so they don't have to come to the library and get a physical book, they actually read it on the internet. They have seminars and activities for adults. They partner very much within this community on numerous workshops. They hold various senior educational training seminars throughout the years, which seniors really love, because I think they're into ukulele lessons now. And they assist patrons with finding materials. They offer fax, photocopying, and scanner service. They have available seven public access computers, and they also help those people that are having difficulty using those computers. They have two early uh, childhood learning centers, computer stations, and they assist children with using those computers also. A little bit of statistics about Swan River Library. This is as of 2017. Their gate count, that's people entering their facility. They have 39,995 people coming in through those doors. Can you say that any facility here in Swan River has that many per year coming through? Like they have a huge amount. They have 35,560 items that were taken out by patrons. They have 4,616 e-library downloads. That's through the electronic book downloads. They have 679 requests from books from other libraries, books they don't have within their facility, DVDs they don't have within their facilities, any information they don't have within their facility, and they can order from another library. They have that many. They have 325 books that, that they send out to other libraries. They have a, you know, a large amount of members, 3,624 members, and they also have 9,500 bookings for the public access computers. These are computers that the public uses. So there's the demand for those computers. So now I finish this part. So I just wanted you to know how busy the library is, and they are extremely, extremely busy, and a very valuable resource in this community, and also in Benito, very valuable. Now, as of 2016, there has been a census, and in that census, it shows that the population for the town of Swan River has gone up, and the population for the Swan Valley West has gone down. Based on last year, what your contribution was, it equaled $21.23. This year you are proposing to give us, or to give a contribution of $19 and, Kathy, what was the? 88 cents. 88 cents. We are going to run in a shortfall of, uh, well, Kathy will tell me. 9211 9, That's how it's going to affect us. proposed budget. Yeah, that's how it's going to affect us. There's no increase on this, there's nothing. It's based per capita. And based per capita, according to the agreement between the town of Swan River and the municipality of Swan Valley West, dated June 28, 2016, and you have it there. And it lists everything all the way down to where it says the regional library board should have all the duties and the powers set out in the provisions of the Part 3 of the Public Library Services Act. We'll get to that just a little bit later. So I'll just, so now if we, we go to the 2016 census, according to $21.23, we should be getting a contribution, a very generous contribution, and we really have to thank you, of $85,217.22, not 79000 and, what is it, Kathy? Yeah, yeah. seven thousand eight hundred and twenty-five dollars. We have a great shortfall. Uh, what you're proposing for us was was what you gave us two or three years ago. Uh, okay, and I'm just gonna. I just would like to go over the Public Library Services Act. I don't know if you have to. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. 
The definition of library board means that a board appointed under this act is to have the administration, management, supervision, charge, or control of a library and to exercise any powers and discharge any duties within granted to and charged on a municipality or regional library board. This is a Manitoba law. The duties of the regional library board, they shall govern, supervise, control, operate, and manage the regional library, make such rules and regulations to govern its own procedure, and for the government, supervision, control, operation, and management of the library as it deems fit. And all exclusive control of the expenditure of all monies collected under the tax levied under Section 28 or provided by the councils of the municipalities that are parties to the agreement for the purposes of the library and of all monies donated and bequeathed to the board for library purposes and all the revenue of the board. I just want to clarify so you know what the board's duties were, their obligations. And I must say, uh, I just started the library board and I do find that they are very diligent and, and they do, do watch the dollars. And now we're going to go down to you. Um, I ask that what you decide tonight, if you're going to decide tonight or in the future on what you're going to contribute to with the regional library board, that it be noted that I'm asking for a recorded vote. I think the ratepayers need and have to know what your decision is. Because there's a lot of people that um, are very concerned about this. Because after all, if we have a shortfall of $9,000, there's going to be cuts. And that cut will be services and programs. Unfortunately, that's what we will have to do. And, uh, and I feel as though there's, been, there's, there's not going to be happy people out there, especially when you're dealing with uh, 39,000 people come through the doors per year. Um, now, I just wanted to go, did I miss anything? Mm -hmm. I hope not, no. I just wanted to go over the property tax. This is what's called tax levy. Am I correct to say that? Yes. It's a tax levy that's you impose on the uh, town, the library in Swan River. Um, land title says you do own the property. The building is in trust to the town of Swan River. My question is, why do you have taxes on your own building? Why are you taxing your own rate payers? The uh, arm of Swan River does not tax Northwest Regional Library. They, we don't have a tax on the Swan Water is another issue. We are, we are going to discuss it with the RM, but um, the water in Benito is something like $100, a little over $100, $202, I can't afford it. What is it, Ellen? $125, something like that. And 45 yeah. cents? 40, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and your water, we're looking at um, $625.84. Again, it's your building. You have to take pride in your building and support it. I'm not trying to give you a pep talk, but I mean, you really have to. Because, the, you know, you take pride in your buildings here, don't you? Know, you do, don't you? And you want people to support your buildings. So take that into consideration, is the water bill and, and the tax levy. When you look at your other facilities you own within the town of Swan River, do you have a tax levy imposed on them? Yes. Do you have on the wellness center? Yes. On everything? Yes. yes. And is it a special tax levy? fall under government buildings. Yeah. It's what they call a special tax levy? Which is a reduced tax levy compared to what everybody else pays. So the taxes that the library pays is reduced compared to say what the co-op. Yes. Okay. I wondered about that because that was one thing that was in the Library Act was that it was a special levy to be imposed on it where that levy also comes back to the North Coast Regional Library. And what else? Was there anything else that I missed? Oh, yes, I just wanted to go over that about the tax increase. I don't understand this. And again, I'm new to the new to the board. So just so um, yeah, I have some notes here. Just on. And Well, I'm that one. Uh -oh. well any, any questions that you may have to do with the individual taxation or whatever, that yes, you, can, yes. you can direct that through during your regular meetings through the counselor from the town of school and whatever that sits on the board. That would be more than glad to and answer those questions. I feel aware of it, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Y
Okay. Yes, it's just that the taxes have increased in four years by two thousand three hundred sixty-four dollars. I mean, uh, sometimes it, it's, it's like five hundred sixty-three forty-eight one year, and then the next year, uh, then the next year it's twenty-three dollars and sixty-four cents. Then we have uh, in and uh, in from two thousand thirteen to two thousand twelve, it's minus one hundred ninety-four dollars. Like there's no consistency in it. All depends on what the, the taxes are based up of two parts: the mill rate we set and the assessment is set by the province. Mm -hmm. That's a combination of two that determines how much tax you pay. So, so in the year that you went down, maybe your assessment went down uh, or increased less than the average if it was a reassessment year. There, therefore, you'd see a, a decrease in, in in taxes. And then it doubled in 2015 to one thousand three hundred and four dollars and sixty-five cents. I mean, if I was the rate chair, if my taxes doubled, I think I'd be a little bit taxes. concerned about that. I'd be pretty concerned about that. So in the special service file? Yeah, 2015 was when the special service file came in. Mm -hmm. so 2013, did you say? 15, I believe. 15? Yeah. I believe that's when it was. And, and sometimes during those years, also when, like if we had special service levies there, which had changed, we did make uh, increases to the library during some of those years as well. Okay, I don't know if you know the, all the history, but there has been years where we did increase. If there was, you know, the special service levies as an example, increased and put a little bit more burden on the library, then we did increase the uh, the, uh, the what we give to the library. Uh, and I guess, first of all, I want to say I, I appreciate all the work the, li the library does. And, you know, I've, I've heard those staff before, and they, they are quite amazing, 39,000 vis visitors. And I appreciate your passion. I can tell you're very passionate, and I very much know that you definitely belong on the library board then if you have that kind of passion. But just to give you some insight into where we're coming from it, nine years ago in 2009, the town's one of our support was 47,500. The following year, 2010, we increased it. We increased our support by 12 and a half percent, up to 53. Uh, then we had an increase of 5%, 4%, 5%, 5 percent, 4 percent, 5 percent, 5 and a half. 2015 was an increase of 3 percent. 2016, which referenced the big tax increase, we increased it by 14 percent. Uh, 2017, last year, we were up to so in eight years, we were from 47,000 up to 78,000. Uh, to 256. This year, you wanted a 9% increase up to 85,200. Um, I don't think it was a 9%. I'm sorry. Well, nine, I'm sorry. that's 9% from from uh, 78 256 is uh, up to 85,217. But there's a, was a, just to clarify that there was a change in the population, and that's and, and that's I, why it looks like so much, but it actually wasn't as much as because the population of the town of Swanderger went up by 107. But I mean, to, to our books, yeah. that's the effect on it. That's the and effect the we have to deal with. Municipality went down by 94. Mm -hmm. And and we the province of Manitoba has not increased their um, commitment to public libraries probably for 15 years. Yeah. I mean, they have been lobbied, I'm sure, by when you. Whereas we to, have increased our commitment to libraries. Yes. In, in well, the last they want the onus to go on the uh, municipalities. And no matter, you know, I mean, you do go to the seminar, you do conferences, and that's the one thing that's brought up probably every year by whatever municipalities. But we find now with going back to $19 and some cents from what you gave last year, it's going to create a deficit. Cause because after all, of, um, we have to approach then the municipality of Swan Valley West, and they will give less. That's no denying it. You know, they're going to give less because they're not going to be any higher than the Thomas Swan River. They they can make that choice as well. Yes, that's yeah. right. I mean, they, they've done this to us before, where we've made the opposite choice. We've gone higher when they've gone lower, so it doesn't necessarily mean it'll work out that way. Councillor White and then Councillor Sack. Being the technologically challenged members of the group relative age, I went to your library, our library often and got the computer training and it was fantastic. It certainly helped me significantly in my little bit of business I do and being the challenge of travel now and then. I've taken your audio books out often. The staff has been wonderful and supportive. I don't think any of us don't want to do this. Not a thing that we don't want to do this. Of course, we want to do it. I speak for myself. 
sometimes we get caught with the numbers. And the numbers will, will affect the rate pairs. Yeah, I will say that, because what the way it is right now, if we have to start cutting, it's going to be programmed. And it's going to be grants, and the application of grants, and those type of things that can bring in people. Because staff-wise, it's going to affect us, and then it's really going to affect the program. See, staff yeah. has the regular duties. Yeah. These are all up and above. Mm -hmm. They'll be cut. So, you know, things like somebody said, I need help with the computer. I'm sorry, I'm filling out this, mm -hmm. or I'm doing this. By I myself, you today, I can't. I can't. You know, I can help you if you can wait, is the way we, we are having to do it right now, when we're short staff, or we will be short staff, and people are just going to have to wait until we can help them on certain things. your cycle. Same with ordering books. When they, you know, they come in and they want another book from a library. Well, I'm sorry, we only do it once every two weeks or once a week or whatever. Like, so we heard, some, uh, you know, some some big numbers in the town of Stone River as a, as uh, I guess how many people frequent the 39,000 and the shift in the population. So, if we have any numbers on the needle, like how much usage they're getting, is their usage then shrinking? With the less population, um, is there even possibly? So, um, for circulation, Benito's numbers as of 2017 uh, was um, just total, I'll just say. It was um, 6,208 was the cir total circulation. Ebooks was 853. Interloan libraries. Um, How does that compare to like five years ago or something? Uh, it's up considerably. Actually, actually um, I, for 27 years, was head librarian in Benito, and uh, I can safely say that Public Library Services has said that Benito is up there with other communities <coughs> per capita. We're number one for population wise. So they are very, very busy also. But they're not to the extent of Swan, because they offer more story time programs, more summer reading, um, more computer classes. They are the head library, and everything is centered out of Swan River. And that's understandable. Right. And that's understandable. Yeah. But Swan River needs the library needs help, and they're relying on this council to help them, to help, yeah, to help the patrons, to help the staff. All right. Well, we we uh, we've heard. You know, we appreciate everything that you guys have brought forward to us and enlightened us with some of the things that you know that you have expressed and, and the and the need. And you know, we're not going to make that decision right here and, and now. The council is going to have to discuss this. Yeah, we're doing tonight. We're doing yeah, we'll, third reading. yeah later on. But we'll have to make that decision and and uh, talk about it and and see what uh, the impact will be and and what necessary changes what uh, that may necessarily be made. And can I just bring up one, uh, the financial statement? You'll be looking for the library. And with, um, Amanda Dixon, as of last, she did her presentation and she said we were basically right on, right on the dollar within with all the extra expenditures regarding the new roofs, the insurance column. We were with the, within about five, $500, $485 to the good this last year. That's how close our budget is. That's how close when I'm budgeting, that's how close it is. Like, yeah, so. She was very, very pleased with the financial statement, the numbers, everything. Okay. Do you have any other further questions? Yes. Yeah. Do you have the shift on the population shift from the last census with you? Uh, the number? Yeah, the numbers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's on the on that spreadsheet okay. that gave you with that budget. So the capital last year was twenty one twenty three. The tell uh, top uh, no, it's not on that. It Swan is on yeah. It's municipal population, water population. That's but that's the current. The previous was on my other sheet. Uh, or on Gloria's. <laughs> Here, yes, I have. You got it. It's just—it's actually on the the handout that she, uh, Kathy gave you that has. No, I, oh, okay. Yeah, I, we can. I can give you this one. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, sure. sure. It's yeah. up the previous and the new one. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 Appreciate that. Our ransom leagues. <laughs> <laughs> Do we know comments? You know how women are. Well, I don't know how long okay. we're going to run if we don't get $9,000. Yeah. Like, we might as well just shut the doors. You guys can take over. And, and, and in all honesty, that's how some board members feel. Yeah. You know? I've been on this board forever, and it just it's just getting to the, t to the point that I just don't want to do it anymore if we don't have money to work with. How can we operate? Yeah. And how do you, how, what do you say needs to be cut and what right. doesn't? Yeah. You know, it's going to affect everyone all the way around. And it's going to affect Swan more than Benito because Benito has two employees. As and they sometimes run one, yeah? yeah. And they have less programs and services. Okay, well, we'll have to look at that, like I said, and uh, we'll be hearing from us. So. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Thanks, Kathy. This was easy. <laughs> you did very well. It's much easier when there's more than one. I think I'm more yappier at four feet. <laughs> oh, we need a Gloria on every board. You could be only one. Oh, sorry. You're only one. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Mr. Warren's Hart is our next delegation. Come forward, Mr. Hart. <coughs> Bye. Bye. Well, first, thank you for allowing me to attend. I had full intention of coming to your budget meeting, but because of other commitments that popped up, I wasn't able to attend. So my presentation, or I guess I should call it a presentation, um, have been downsized considerably from what I was going to ask. So basically what I've done at this point in time is just some comparisons. Basically what I've done, I've gone back to 2010. All of you were on council except Mr. Mario. I believe he came on in 2014. That's correct. So what I've done is I've, I've just done financial comparisons from then to, to, to 17. I don't have 18. The numbers that I have for 17 are not audited financial numbers. They're still part of your December 31st financial statement, so if they're not audited, so these numbers are possibly out a bit. And I've always rounded up, I hate using dollars and pennies, so. So firstly, miscellaneous revenues in 2010 was $1.449 million, $1,449,000. 2017, it jumped up to $2,059,000, and an increase of $610,000 which approximately 400,000 was revenue that was received from um, the landfill or whatever, because in 2010 there was a charge, but it was very minimal. And the other increase that I could see was the transfers of 158,000. Those transfers are from nominal surplus or reserve, but not reserves, uh, like the last year, because, but there's an increase, that's fine. It's, again, the numbers are, are good, are rounded, are, uh, accumulated surplus and then and also some from reserves. Lord, should you be able to leave us a copy of that? <laughs> My computer copy? Whatever. Um, I can come back. If, if you copy. guys want me to go through this for two hours, I can do that at another well, day. Well. And then you guys can take your notes. But I, I want I know I'm going to take more than 10 minutes, and I see another delegation take more. So I, I'm just sort of, now the expenditures. Uh, it's interesting, council salary, and the salary is compensation, compensation only. In 2010, it was $65,000. Again, I'm rounding it. 2017, any idea what it was? $100,000. Increase of $35,000 in compensation. That means your monthly allotment, your hourly, your per diem for going to meetings, whatever the case may be. That's a 53% increase in seven years. Okay. Uh, next I went into, and uh, by the way, all this information that was given to me that I have in front of me, it except you guys can uh, receive it from probably Julie and or I got it from Terry. I asked him, he was very timely in the information that I wanted in the right time. So these, the next one I've gone to is, is the uh, part of the financials, um, auditor statements that the auditors do every year, and it's to do with salaries, need to be 
printed out, typed up, and they're supposed to be posted in the office of the municipality. Shows anybody who makes more than fifty thousand dollars a year. You guys are all aware of that, I take it. So, I mean, I've got. Well, yeah, here's council indemnity. That's right, like, number two. So I took 14, 15, and 16. 17 was not done yet because it's an audit thing. It's something auditors do. Um, and I kept here the salaries. And I have some concerns with what has transpired. My first question is, in 2015, you have two chief administrative officers listed on this form. Is there an explanation to that? They were both employed at that time, and one received a severance till the end of the year. So a full year severance? Mm, I can't remember when she left. There was, I believe, if I remember correctly, there's some vacation time and so forth that was included with that as well. So accumulated vacation time. She would receive the severance pay, as far as the salary, plus then any any and all employees who work, I think it's five or ten years or whatever it is, get another four dollar four dollar. Four days per year of service salary given to them. So this that was over and above this. That would have been paid out in that year? Her uh, pre retirement bonus would be included in that year or would it have been the following year? It might have been in 2016. So basically she received the salary for a full year, uh, according to this as I look at it. And secondly she received and even though she didn't work the full year, she had holidays and I agree, whatever. But to me, it seems strange that you have two CAOs and there is a part in the act that says that you can only have one CAO. We only ever heard one at a time. Well, that's what I mean, one at a time. Mm -hmm. So there's two salaries and that, that, that's almost, uh, well, let's say $190,000 for two salaries, plus the benefit package that she would have received, rightfully so, at the end of her employment of four days per year, which is another sum that is not listed on here, that is totally separate. And I can vouch for that because I received that four days per year service that I got. It never showed up on this form. Uh, and then I'm a little astonished with, with what the chief administrative officer is being paid um, with very little CAO experience is making more than the outgoing CAO. Very perfect. You've been in the office for five, six, seven years, whatever. Eight years. One year seems like it's an in old Four, you took, pardon me, in 05, you took over the position of CAO, and your salary bumped up from 60000 to 85000 without any experience as a CAO, and there's quite a difference. Whether you believe it or not, and I think you understand now, the different duties that go with the CAO as opposed to an assistant CAO. Lord CAO, uh, refer to me, okay? No one asked you the questions, please. <laughs> Seriously? Okay. Uh, so then in, in 2016, uh, the CEO was making as much as the outgoing CEO and some more. And I, I, education is one thing, and I, I understand that I manage and Julie has all the courses. Um, experience is a big teacher. And I'll give you a couple examples where, where inexperienced CEOs possibly don't see everything as there. And I'll, I'll go back to you, Councilor Delorier, the, the garbage bylaw. You know how it was written, you know I brought to your attention. Uh, anybody with, with experience would have realized right away that there was something wrong there, as well as council should have realized. I mean, two, anyways, that's one issue. Uh, public notice. We held a hearing here uh, after the, the second hearing to do with the Wellness Center Board and the additional funds. And you recall there was a petition over the group here. I made a, a verbal presentation. Uh, there was a group here, and uh, Mrs. Fothergill drafted up a petition, and all these people signed it, and I didn't sign it. Okay. My, my beef, I knew, I mean, their beef was that the, the extra funds that had to be spent, well you guys already spent this, so their, their, their objection was a lot different than mine. Uh, I never received a list of the upcoming hearing that was held at the hall. Why? I asked Mrs. Father, you know, she said, well you weren't on the petition. Well, then I don't have to be on the petition. And I mentioned that to Mrs. Father, you know, if I make a presentation and I give you my street address and everything else, I am to be notified, no different than somebody on the petition. Those are two personal experiences I've had, and I'm sure there's more. Uh, but anyway, we all learned. It took me a lot of years to figure it out, and I wasn't perfect when I retired. I didn't know all the answers, but I, I feel that the salaries that are being presented are somewhat high. Anyways, I'll leave that. Um, so in, 
In Mrs. Fothergill's case, uh, the, from going from an assistant up to the CAO, 40% increase in one year, and the next year was a 10% increase, okay? So that's a 50% increase for the CAO, 50% increase for the members of council, and then I went back and I checked with the union, and from 2010 to 2017, their increase was 14.8%. What a difference between what's happening and not happening, to leave it at that. So some of the other stuff that I noticed that uh, has increased substantially, protective services. have gone from 995,000 roughly to 1.35 million, or an increase of $356,000. And, and you guys know well pertains to these, and I'm going with a major headache, I'm not gonna pick each a counterpart to this, you will be here all night. Now they've been uh, carrying on, and I'm just following through the uh, same way they're listed as on the financial statements and on your budget. Environmental health garbage went up $517,000 in seven years. And this is all seven years, gate 210 to 217. Public health, it actually went up just, well, we'll call it $29,000, and that one there is doctor recruitment. Okay, that one there. Um, Environmental Development Services, it de actually decreased 18,400. I believe that was a decrease because of uh, the Enterprise Center. Can I just make a comment on the garbage? Yeah. Um, the, uh, you referenced on, the, our, on our other income that a uh, majority of that increase was from the garbage. Yeah. Uh, that's the corresponding expense because our, our garbage trucks, the town's garbage trucks get weighed. Yeah, well, I really and we get yeah. sold. Yeah. So there's a corresponding increase, but there's also a corresponding expense no, exactly. to, go, to go along with that. Just just want everybody to be aware. Yeah. I'm fully people are watching on YouTube at home too, so. Yeah, no, I'm fully aware of that. I mean, a lot of people aren't, and I guess yeah. maybe I have a bit of an advantage because I dealt with 30-some budgets in my lifetime, so. Uh, it took me a long time to get my head back into this. Um, so that was, the development services went down, as I mentioned. Uh, there was a decrease in conservation and industrial services. I just don't. Uh, yeah, well, that was the Enterprise Center and the incentive plan. <coughs> Council has eliminated the discount on taxes. I don't have a problem with that. Some people, the people that take advantage of it, get the advantage. The people that can't afford it or don't want to take advantage of it, so be it. So I don't have a problem with that. But the incentive plan, it, it, was, it didn't sit well with me when I was the CAO and it was incorporated and at the direction of Council. I don't really believe that there are a lot of structures being constructed that are being built here because of the incentive plan. And up until 100 years ago, uh, there was no incentive plan. So those people that are building, in some cases, people are building a house on speculation, and they build it, and they're going to sell it to Councilor Sockwell. <coughs> I'm sure Councilor Sockwell gets the advantage, but I'm sure that the contractor doesn't pass that over to him. Yeah, but that's my thought. Uh, recreation is the one that really blew me away. It's gone up from 402000 to $920,000, or an increase of $518,000. Um, most of that is the Rec Wellness Center, as you're probably aware. Um, I don't want to rehash hearings that have gone by, but I think the presentation that was made at the hearings has come fully true. Everything that I spoke of at that time has come true. We can't, the town is having a financial problem affording that pool and maintaining the services that are required. And, and, and Councilor Morio, I'll touch on that. Your article in last week's paper, not today's paper, the last week's paper, was very, very good. I thought that was an excellent wants, not needs, or needs, not wants. That was a want, and now that want is, ca is causing the needs of this community to be impacted, and a good example of these ladies here from the library. Uh, so the pool is costing us to operate two mills, 2.1 mills. The boring cost to pay for that is 1.203 mills, plus the frontage charge per lot for $59.73. So the total mill rate is 3.308 mills, and that increased into a lot of money, as, as you guys do the math. If I recall, and correct me if I'm right, but when this was all put through, put through, there was a $75 per lot fee. That changed to 
So the people that did the people that pay up front seventy five dollars, or was that always a fifty to nine point seven three? Can you check on that for me? The story on the, the seventy five dollars a lot was was at a uh, nominal interest rate, and then once we went to the bank and got the lower interest rate, that's what it, that's how it changed the number. They, all the calculation when you first do your boring bylaw, we picked say five percent, right. just because we didn't want to have to redo the boring bylaw if it came in at five point one or whatever. So the seventy five dollars was all calculated on that. When we went to borrow the money at I forget what it is, three point eight or whatever it is. And that that's how the calculation changed. That seems a bit, but anyways, I, won't, I, won't. I don't have the information, but I can't discuss it or debate it. Okay. Uh, fiscal services uh, had an increase of eighty-six thousand six hundred dollars. What that was all about, I don't really totally recall, but that's fine. So th there are increases, no matter what. There's going to be increases, and, and Councillor uh, Delory has mentioned. I, I've seen it twice on on my computer stating that you guys have set an example, you're going to hold the line with your your compensation. But the fact of the matter is, you guys had some, some substantial increases in the last seven years where the other employees haven't. And increases are inevitable. Unless you cut services, increases are inevitable. And I understand, and I don't know where that's gone, but I talked to uh, Council Jacobson, I talked to the mayor with regards to the additional snow clearing on Main Street. If that goes ahead, that's an additional cost. Is that a want or a need? We can say it's a need, but it's been there for a hundred years or however long the town has been, all of a sudden becomes more important. And yes, it, it, safety is a big issue. It doesn't matter what street you're on, that one probably worse than any other street in Swan River. But the problem isn't so much the street, it's the people driving the street. That's where the problem lies. If they drove in Winnipeg, they wouldn't, they would, I'm afraid there'd be some fender benders going on. So anyway, I'll leave that at that. Um, reserves. In 2010, you had, there was $2.868 million in total reserves. I'm not talking uh, the, the um, payroll, not the payroll, but the heck of that one that you guys get every year. I can tell you right away, sorry. Reserve section. Anyway, so. $929,000 was taken out of it for the town office and beautiful facility. It should have been built 10 years earlier. It was something that I know Harry Schroeder, my predecessor, wanted to build it. The council wouldn't go for it. I wanted to build it back in the early 2000s. Council wasn't prepared at that time to proceed. And at that time, my recommendation to council was build it. We were putting fifty or $60,000 into a reserve every year to build that reserve so we could build a new facility. At that time, the cost wouldn't have been what it was today because all of a sudden, <coughs> construction cost just went through the roof. We could have built that building, whatever we would have built, in the same location here, and there probably wouldn't have been any boring or very little boring. But anyways, uh, the other one is a six hundred area eight hundred thirty-three thousand dollars that was taken out of recreation facilities to go into the pool. You know, if there's any questions of me, please ask because this is the information that I picked up off all of these documents that. Terry happily gave to me. So then I look into the budgeting and I, I, I look at it and say, you know, there used to be a re well, replacement reserve, fire truck reserve, uh, employer reserve, office reserve. A couple of reserves are no longer in existence. And there's a new one. The 6,000 was budgeted at 17, but not in 18. So some of you guys have knocked off that reserve for the landfill. Uh, just to comment on that, our uh, financial officer indicated that we. It's based off, I'm sure that calculation was around when you were around off of uh, the future closing costs 75 years down the road and they try and back it. Well, the 6,000 we were putting in, apparently we've caught up to where our usage is at, so he recommended we take a year off. Okay, that, no, so. not, see, I, I'm not aware yeah. of that. But, I mean, is our land still good for 75 years? That's if what our consultants have told us. If, if people recycle and do what they're supposed to do, then mm -hmm. hopefully that will happen. Uh, you know, and I hope it does, but there's that one little word you use, if, you know, and that's, that's a big question. Uh, employee reserve is still there. The one that's taken out is the fire truck and the recreation facilities. Now, I hear and I, I see on a five-year capital expenditure plan that there's a million dollars being contemplated for next year to 
repair the roof, or pardon me, the floor in the arena? Perhaps. Is, is it? So you don't have a reserve, so you're going to be borrowing the money again, right? Okay. So with that, you're borrowing, but the, the, to borrow just for the wellness center alone is 0.877 mils. That's a lot of money. And I know I talked to Councilor Jacobson, he said, well, you know, interest rates low, we can just keep borrowing money. Uh, well, it still costs you money. I hope, I trust and I hope, that all the work of the forefathers in your chairs and in Julie's chair and my chair have built up reserves and we're putting money aside for needs, not wants, needs, that you could rely on that to help offset any cost. A million dollars is a lot of money to borrow. So then a question I have is, uh, can you guys enlighten me as to what the town is allowed to borrow? There is well, the provincial there, there, government. There, there is a calculation that uh, that we are allowed to borrow. I don't know where we're at with that, Julie. You know that. You got, she, you got us after about to. six months ago. Yeah. We were well below our cap, less than half. At the present time. At the present time, we're less than we were. We were less than half. I want to say it was about six months ago. We asked you for that information. No, no it's not. No. Okay. So you're going to borrow a million dollars potentially for the for the. Um, arena because you have no reserve. Um, the lagoon has been on the books for how many years? 15 years? Pardon me? 98. Oh, close, 20 years. That's going to become a reality or it has to become a reality in the near, in, at some point in time. Because, and that's big dollars. We're not talking a million. We're talking 10, 15 million dollars. I don't know. I have no idea. Yes, there are going to be potentially some funds coming from government to help offset those. But you're probably going to pass your maximum if they allow you to. Now, Depending on what you're borrowing, if it's a necessity, such as a lagoon or a water treatment plant, they will overlook that. I can talk about that personally because it happened to me. Or it happened to the municipality I worked for, it didn't happen to me directly, I can't borrow money. So, what happens if that's the case, and all of a sudden you can't borrow the funds, or you can borrow them? What I'm seeing is what this council has done, or is doing, is saying, well, we'll just keep borrowing money, just keep borrowing money. Well, that's what happened to our taxes to our federal and provincial governments. They just keep borrowing more than what they're taking in. And there has to be some reckoning. You guys have to look long-term, not just knee-jerk reaction. And, and there's a lot of long-term place in that five-year capital plan. You're also talking about a fire truck in the future, and I think they're good for, what, 15 years, 12 years? I think is what they're saying the life expectancy is. Some, I, I, I'm not, I don't recall all those numbers. So you have to replace a fire truck, and there's no reserve. You haven't put any money into reserve. But food for thought, you guys. You guys are going to have to start increasing the budgets marginally every year. Um, there's a lot of other stuff in here, and a lot of it is a wish list. I know that. I mean, I've done it too, but you have to do something in case something shows up. But I think you have to give some real consideration on how you're going to finance all this other than boring. Because boring is just costing money on top of money. You're a businessman, you can write off your interest. We're, we're a municipality, we can't write that interest off. There's no benefit to us as a taxpayer of this community to borrow money. It just costs us more money. Uh, utility. <laughs> I see the revenue went from, in 2010, from 1,047,000 to 2,204,000, which is 110% increase, which is, I don't have a problem with that. Your utility reserve, I see you guys are doing space. I mean, the, two, the water rates are the water rates. I did the last water rate study in 2001, I believe, or you guys correct me, whoever that was here. That was the second year I was here. Okay, It was a challenge. I must admit, it was a challenge. I didn't hire a consultant. I felt it was my responsibility to do that as a CAO, and I did it. Yes, it was trial and error. Yes, I asked a lot of questions. Yes, I phoned government loss, and I phoned PUB loss. But I did the, did the bylaw, and it came through, and it finally was approved. The water rates, I don't have a problem with it. Um, I know they went up close to 80% now they're up from where they were two years ago or whatever. I know a lot of people complain and to me water rates, water is cheap. That is cheap. Ask anybody that lives in the real municipality that has to haul water. I don't know what they're paying though, 50 bucks a thousand and then depending how far they live from town, so it could be up to 80 or whatever, I don't know. I don't think that's a problem here. I think we need to, we need to maintain those, those rates and I understand a year ago there was a delegation at your, at your uh, hearing regarding your bylaw was questioning that and wanting you guys to redo it. Don't. Leave it there. 
Yeah, people are mad for a while, and, and to be quite honest with you, people take it out on the front, on the girls in the front. I don't know how many times you guys have got hit up. I'm sure you have a few, but they're the ones that take the verbal abuse. And hopefully now it's over and done with, and life goes on. So what I've done is I've gone and, and uh, I checked to see what the education requirement was in 2010. $2,746,000. That's what our requirement from the town was. And Terry can pick these numbers up for you guys. He can. Uh, in 2017, I'm going 17th and I'm going 18 because it's, it was two million seven hundred ninety-nine thousand, an increase of fifty-three thousand dollars in seven years. Very minimal, very very minimal. That is because of the cutbacks the government's giving, and they're doing things that to reduce their budgets, which you guys can't. I mean, there's a total difference between education budget and municipal budget. But during those seven years, with the with the increases that they didn't give to the town, I would have thought that to be prudent, council and administration would have increased those taxes, the municipal portion marginally, to place into reserve. You're better off to, better off to have a dollar in your pocket than to go borrow a dollar. It could have been done quite easily with marginal increases, and again, council the area here stands as if you're not gonna do an increase for anybody this year, and I think you're gonna find problems with that. But to I wouldn't say that's my stance, I've voted on the last well, seven or eight budgets, and we've had we've brought in more tax dollars than we than the previous budgets, and I voted in favor of every one. So I wouldn't say that my stance is that I'm not going to do an increase for anybody. You spoke twice this year that I caught on video. One, you said council is not taking increase. You have to set an example. Oh, oh, okay. oh, council. Oh, I thought you meant as a whole. No, no. Okay, sorry. No, I'm sorry. I mean there is an increase. Yes, there yes increase, council. Right? Okay, but yes. there was an opportunity over the last seven years to increase up your budgets a little more, marginally more to put into reserves to offset some of these costs. Now, somebody was questioning me the other day, and I don't, I don't even ask, try not to answer anything in municipal because I'm not in touch with everything that happens. Yeah, I can watch it on my computer, but I don't know the background and I don't know what's happening. There's a study or something going on? Is that at the pool or is that at the arena? There will be a study done at the uh, arena basically to check the floor Four. situation that we have there. Okay. Uh, and a little bit more of the envelope to see what needs to be done yep. as far as what's going yep. on with the. So how situation. are we paying for that? Is that coming out operating? Yes. Yeah. So if we had a reserve, <clears throat> I mean, as an example. But to, but to answer your question in full transparency, there's also a study we've done on the envelope of the pool right now because we. Sorry, I don't know what. There's also a study being done on the envelope of the pool right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and just, that's being paid by operating again. Yes. Okay. So there goes your operating budget. I'm not, I, it, it, I'm not trying to belabor this, but it is very important as far as I'm concerned. So anyway, that's, that's that. So the total, as I said, the total increase on the education is about well, $53,000 in seven years. That is probably going to go up in the very near future because I can't see the schools keep cutting, pulling schools or doing whatever they're doing to keep their budget down. And I don't foresee our conservative government giving them more money each year or two to operate. That's just a fact of life. That's just the way life is. Um, so in the case of the municipality, your budget went up $1.7 million in seven years. That's a lot of money, but that's what it is. That's all I'm going to present. I think council needs to look very long and very hard and try to be a little more futuristic as to what is going to happen in this community. Um, for the people who are, and I know I understand, rumor has it, that some members of the council are going to retire this year, and, and if they are, great, thank you very much for your services. I mean, it's not an easy job. I mean, I, I, I can relate. For the people who are laying their name stand, good luck. And for the new people that are coming in, it'll be an eye open. That's all I have. Thank you for allowing us. If you have any questions of me, uh, please ask, and I'll try to answer them. Absolutely. So if anybody has any questions, uh, go ahead and ask uh, Lawrence. Okay. Well, Lawrence, I appreciate you uh, coming here and, and uh, you know, doing your, like I said, the report card, and, and I'm sure that a few, you know, I'm sure that all of us will take, you know, some of the information that you have uh, to heart and and, uh, and look into some of the matters as well that you presented. In fairness, one thing I mentioned years ago that I had not challenged any question is to use my wisdom, what's left of it, or not my wisdom, my knowledge, wisdom I don't have. Um, 
Yeah, by all means, pick my brain what's left of it. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Moving on to correspondence, we see here that we have the uh, uh, MIT, the traffic board hearing. There's just a couple of issue or items on there that reference to us. Everybody has a chance to look at that. If there's any comments on that, Councillor uh, White. I don't accept their reply. I'm not sure what you do about it. But it suggests that they turn down our application to go to 50. The they haven't turned it down. Uh, they're, well, they're, want, they're wanting us, they're, the, the, the hearing is about. The letter from the highway said no. Their recommendation to the oh. board is no, okay. well, but the board will make the decision. Right, so you can make presentation if you choose at you the hearing. Send a note or send a person saying, hey, we don't agree with their decision. Okay. I guess if that's the will of council, then we can do that. Uh, Boy, you had a question first? Well, I just, I, I can't hardly remember that, I can't believe it takes this long to get through to the high track board, four years. That's something else. But I can't hardly remember, I don't hardly, I don't quite remember if I voted in favor of this because I don't think I'm quite in favor of it now. Especially with the new street light by Tim Hortons, I think it changes the dynamics there quite a bit. I think if I can remember correctly, kind of the spirit of our, of our council at the time is, we asked for the lights because of the steady traffic. The Tim Hortons was built, the co-op was built, and we've seen a we've seen a safety factor. There's a lot of kids crossing the road. They told us no to the stoplights, so we were trying to pursue any avenue to try to get traffic to, to slow down. So we actually made this application at the time to bring the traffic down. I, I can't remember if it was a split vote or obviously we voted in favor of it, which whoever voted for it or against it, I think I was in favor of it because we were we were basically being denied a stoplight there until some residents took rally and some unfortunate events down south in other communities uh, close to a school zone. Until then, we were actually permitted the lights. Now the lights have come in and now this is coming forward. My personal feeling is that now that the lights are there, the traffic is slowed and I think there is a safe crosswalk for students. I wouldn't be necessarily in favor of changing the speed anymore. So why? If the light is green, they come around the corner at 50, they're going 80 when they go through the stop sign. And a block further down, we have a daycare with 100 plus kids going to it plus a, uh, a residential area. So if they stop, yeah, absolutely. But the lights are green, you have the same speed going on. I'm not in favor of canceling it. Um, this resolution was brought forward before my timeline. Council because it was from February 18, 2014. But uh, I agree with uh, everything that uh, Councillor Sackle uh, said that uh, this was probably put forward as a pressure tactic to get the speed slowing down uh, on that stretch of highway and stuff like that. And reading uh, the MIT report and the reasons and what stuff like that. And now with the the street light in there, um, I personally feel it's proved that uh, uh, the the speeds that there and with the access road and stuff like that, that uh, uh, we look at here and see if we actually rescind this uh, resolution and uh, our application to the board uh, for it. So. Okay, so so far I hear that we have possibly three that say that they're, let's say, leave it as it is. What is it now? 60. 60, where the lights are and 80 further down on the other side of the bridge. We have to give Julie, I think, some direction. Either we don't make presentation there, we just leave it as it is, and only decide, or we rescind the uh, the application. One or the other. I'll second David's motion to rescind. Okay. That mean, does that mean leave it the way it is? Leave it the way it is. Okay, so we'll need a resolution then.
Okay. <laughs> I, I, I thought that we would just wait. But, uh, You're wanting a resolution to state that this we'll resolution is rescinded? Yeah. Okay. And let the Highway Traffic Board know we withdraw. Mm -hmm. withdraw. Councilor Sackle. Yeah. Well, Councilor no, Sackle. She's writing a resolution, though. We'll vote on it. No, yeah. just pointing out. That's exactly what I said. She's wanting to know what the text for the resolution is. Okay, oh, sure. so while, while Julie's writing up the resolution, then we'll move on to Swan Valley Settlements and Immigration Services Potluck uh, Supper. So uh, anyone that wants to attend that and support that, then get out and to the potluck event. Swan Valley Communities That Care. Sorry. I just want to tell you why they're doing this is uh, if they make some money on this potluck, it's going towards folk fest. Right. Thank you. Folk Fest is a good event. Council White. They didn't charge me for it. I have no problem being charged no. whatsoever, but they didn't charge it last year. No, it's not. You're not being charged. You're making a contribution oh, uh, as in a silver collection. Well, okay. Uh, I want to tell them that. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful opportunity to meet the new people to our community. Absolutely. Swan Valley Communities that Care, AGM, anybody that wants to attend that, they're more than welcome to do so. Uh, I'm on that committee, so I will be attending. I'm not too sure if the mayor is, is attending, but I will be there. Uh, next, ACL is going to have their AGM. Uh, I'm assuming that Glenn will be there unless he asks me to attend. But uh, again, anybody that wants to attend those uh, meetings may do so. Um, new business, National Health and Fist Fitness Day. A long resolution to read. So, Moved by Councilor Gloria, seconded by Councilor Gloria. Whereas the Parliament of Canada wishes to increase awareness among Canadians of the significant benefits of physical activity and to encourage Canadians to increase their level of physical activity and their participation in recreational sports and fitness activities. It is in Canada's interest to improve the health of all Canadians and to reduce the burden of illness on Canadian families and on the Canadian health care system. Many local governments in Canada have public facilities to promote the health and fitness of their citizens. The Government of Canada wishes to encourage local governments to facilitate Canada's participation in healthy physical activities. The Government of Canada wishes to encourage the country's local government, non-government organizations, the private sector and all Canadians to recognize the first Saturday in June as National Health and Fitness Day to mark the day with local events and initiatives celebrating and promoting the importance and use of local health, recreation, sports and fitness activities, facilities. Canada's mountains, oceans, lakes, forests, parks and wilderness also offer recreation, <coughs> recreational and fitness opportunities. Canadian Environment Week is observed throughout the country in early June and walking and, and, and cycling are great, great ways to reduce vehicle pollution and improve physical fitness. Declaring the first Saturday in June to be National Health and Fitness Day will further encourage Canadians to participate in physical activities and contribute to their own health and well-being. Therefore, the town of Swan River proclaim, proclaims National Health and Fitness Day in the town of Swan River as the first Saturday in June. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Uh, moved by Council Morio, seconded by Councilor Delorier, resolve that resolution 12 dated February 18, 2004, be rescinded. Further be resolved that notification that this resolution has been rescinded to be given to manageable infrastructure. I think it's just called Manitoba Infrastructure now. Yeah, uh, I, just, I just took it from the it two letter. Four or okay. two and the Manitoba Highway Traffic Board. 214 or 24? 214. 214? Sorry, 214. Yeah. We rescinded. Yeah, Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Bocce ball court side. Everybody is aware that the new bocce ball uh, court that was built down in the Legion Park, they're looking at uh, placing a sign there. 
So I move by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delore, resolved that the Bocce Ball Committee be authorized to place a sign at the north end of the Bocce Ball Courts in the Legion Park. Discussion. How big is it? There's uh, a picture in the email. In the there. Scroll down, there's a, it's like a great big tombstone. It's actually pretty nice. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Yikes. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, offer to purchase land. Moved by Councillor Delore, seconded by Councillor Morio, resolved that Block 15, or sorry, Lot 15, Block 3, Plan 21440, 304 Hill Avenue, be sold to Blair Delorier for $2,000 plus GST. Further be it resolved that a residential dwelling be constructed to lock up stage on this property within two years of the possession date. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, sorry, Councillor White. How does that number fit with the other boss we've been selling out though? Same number? Mm -hmm. Okay, Very no consistent. problem. consistent. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Resolve that block, block 5, block 1, plan 2717, 18 Vivian Street be sold to Jody Rebalkin for $1,000 plus <coughs> GST. Discussion? Councillor Sacco. C wants to buy two lots there, and I'm not against it per se, just more questioning it. What was the value of those lots? Just the only reason I'm questioning it is because there's no stipulation on anything having to be built. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing, but I'm just kind of, just for curiosity's sake. How long have they been in our inventory? Inventory. How long? Since the industrial park was built, I would imagine. So it'd be nice, I think, just like going back to you know getting a, a map of our inventories and putting it out there because you know, there might be potential buyers, people wanting to buy uh, you know good property to you know maybe there will be a future expansion on here and maybe that's a good thing. But I just you know with some of the lots that we've been selling at a reduced rate, there's I guess not for new era egg, but uh, I think their amount is very similar to this. It was. Yeah. But just the thought if we can get to get an actual inventory on a map system and maybe share that some way somehow. Yeah, put it on our website. House or white? I was gonna say that. Put it on our website. Alright. All right. All in favor? Opposed? Moved by Councillor Delore, second by Councillor Morio, resolve that lot four, block one, plan 2717, 16 Vivian Street, be sold to Jody Rubalkin for $1,000 plus GST. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. We've been selling lots of land lately. Good. Scratched the cup. Number four, well development board. Uh, moved by Council Delore, second by Council Morio. Result that the council will never accept the tender bill, tender bid from Laidell Construction Limited in the amount of sixty-nine thousand one hundred and twenty dollars to perform phase one well for development of the well site upgrade. Derek, do you have anything on that at all to add? Uh, I've added just some PDFs to explain that this is, there's an A contract and a B contract of phase one. This is the second part. So I remember during the, during the emergency, we were talking about uh, installing a well for roughly $250,000. dollars 200 of that would have been the dual rig. So we've been able to do this for, for a pretty good price of $190,000. So. I do see these prices as uh, as a good deal compared to what we were first looking at when we were we were talking to drillers and professionals. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay. So 
Swan, Va Swan Valley Animal Protection League request have it there. There's all of that Council Morio, uh, moved by Council Morio, seconded by uh, Council Deloria, resolved that the Swan Valley Animal Protection League be authorized to install an outdoor bulletin board at the Centennial Arena grounds next to the garage sale bulletin board discussion. Councilor Morio and um, then Councilor Deloria. Do we know have this been run by the uh, the bylaw or bylaw and building um, officer? I would expect to know if this is actually possible um, and that they can do this, and if there's any associated permit fees for putting up the sign and all that stuff. That has to be it um, was discussed with the recreation department, and they were okay with this happening if it's permitted. The one that's there for the garage shells, the town put up. I, I don't believe okay. so, but I'm and, not. And it, but it's on posts that are in the ground. Right? The only thing that concerns me about this is, is it's being weighed down with blocks. You see all the time on windy days, those things getting flipped over. That's great if they're putting it right by the garage shell, and that'll get. I would assume if it's facing the same way, it's going to flip right into the street. I would like to see it on um, posts. Or, or, yeah. or, or, or can, it, can it share the frame with the garage sale one? I, I, I don't know what. I think they made, had, it, had it made. They right? had it made already. So, but that would be my only change. If, to, it's, if it's made of wood, we could bolt it together. Yeah. Uh, like I think it shows it was made at Grazers and it's a... Oh, really? Uh, so it might be have one of those, uh, instead of the cement blocks, have a requirement that they have one of those drill type spikes. Oh, yeah, that yeah but you can, get, you can get those lots of places now. So that if, if it can be removed later on, you're not removing concrete piles, it's just those screw piles. Screw piles is what yeah. I hope. So. Something other than blocks, I guess. My, my only concern, just thinking about this, is that it, it, is this going to be a permanent thing that they want to have there? Do they express that it's going to be something permanent? And, and what's it for? And and the thing is, what then about other organizations that might want to start putting up portable billboards on town properties and so forth, moving ahead? You know, like I'm not against them putting them up in places. You know, but I just don't know about maybe a time period or something like that. But we will get other requests as if we <coughs> allow this because. Um, I'm sure other organizations, non-profit or even for-profit, might want to use the area for um, advertising. The only reason why I think that we have the garage sale sign uh, there is because we have a bylaw that states that you can't place garage sale signs on boulevards and so on throughout the town of Swan River. So that was something that was, I think, so designed to prevent all that from happening. So if these people started putting placards on the, on the boulevards, then we give this to them? Is that what you're saying? That's my question, too. What's that? That was my question, too. Councillor Sack. I think with any request, we always look at each one individually. Um, I know the Animal Protection League works on a shoestring budget. They're funding the cost for this. I think it's a small part that we can do to help them out. Financially, we don't help them out, really. Uh, we can put it there if somebody wants to advertise there. Later on, we'll cross that bridge when the time comes. We usually look at these individuals. Uh, I think if we keep pushing them down, they're just going to give up in the end. <coughs> Ditto. I also think they'll probably post their animals on this. We all get posters at the store of, you know, who, how many cats they have, how many dogs they have. This way, it'll be out there. They'll maybe make them big. I think that's what they'll use this for. So then, and I agree with Jason. I think we do nothing to help them. So then, if we if we if we do permit, then we would want to have it so that are you saying that it can't like blow over or have it some way that it has to be anchored that it would blow over? Yeah, screw piles or some screw piles are you know hundred bucks would get you screw piles. But yeah. Okay. All in favor? Opposed?
moved by Councillor DeWory, moved, moved by Councillor DeWory, second by Councillor DeWory, whereas Swan Valley Youth Baseball has requested to build a batting cage at Oro Menish Field, and whereas the Recreation Committee has reviewed the information and drawing that were submitted. Therefore, be it resolved that the Swan Valley Youth Baseball be authorized to proceed with construction provided all required permits are in place and capital costs are covered by their club. Further be it resolved that the Town of Swanaroo will provide the labor as requested from the Public Works and Recreation Departments subject to the availability of staff. So that's something that we, our committee, had spoke with, uh, with Patty and uh, this club wants to have their, their own batting cage at Orwell Field. So with them fundraising the dollars and so forth and with just a minimal dollars or costs of some labor I think and some help from public works and from the rec department uh, it'll be really nominal from us from what we've seen so any further questions <coughs> cause more so what's the community's recommendation that we go ahead that's our recommendation yeah. yeah all in favor opposed carry <coughs> Community reports, public, our superintendent of public works, or works reports, sorry. Question there, Councillor White. Uh, what's happening with the well? The well? Uh, they were scheduled to be in town last Saturday, but because of road permits, uh, they couldn't leave until today. So they'll be here, there's new schedules to arrive here Thursday. And we will be drilling the new well uh, Friday. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so moved by Councillor Dolores and by Councillor Morial, resolved that the superintendent, superintendent of the works report be received. All in favor? Opposed? Go ahead. I, I just had one more question on the uh, on the phase two. Where are we at with on design with that? Like we're basically right in the middle of it so right. nothing's really been just nothing's really finalized at all mm -hmm. so we are we've been asked or we've been giving our basically the class d estimates and so we are the engineering on it and, and all that is not done then so are we but we're still thinking that it could happen this summer slash fall absolutely <laughs> we're looking at an end of june or mid-june end of june tender period that we go into probably the start of July and it'd be awarded. And, and around that same time, we'll also know some more details on some possible funding. I, I read an email today. Uh, yeah, it's not it's not finalized, but uh, we have been approved by the board on their budget <laughs> okay. to go into the province. Okay. Councilor Friesen. I just wanted to uh, thank you for getting that bell thing fixed over in front of Taylor School. It was great. Also, spring cleanup was good. I put out lots of bags this morning and they're all gone. And the giveaway weekend was good too. Councilor Dore. Um, on the grates on Main Street, the grates that surround the trees, yeah. how, how often do we inspect those as far as levelness, as far as fit? Because there's a few of them I was watching and I noticed of somebody that, that tripped and fell on one. And then I also myself I've seen a few that are pretty uh they're usually replaced in the chips underneath them every two years this was the year but we've already I've already instructed Mike to remove them we'll have all of them on fifth and main uh, and we'll be replacing with uh, chip growl uh, so there will be no more grades no more grades so we think the trees are established enough that we we don't need them and also the they won't be up above. We may have a problem. Some businesses may not like a little bit of a mess. It's not going to be pea stones where there's going to be stones in vehicles. It's going to be chipped gravel. So um, we, we don't want to put the grades back because the, the roots are pushing them up too much? or That and we're under some liability issues of people that hurt. We won't still be under liability issues now that we have a gaping hole in the sidewalk? Well, no, the, no, we'll fill them with gravel and it'll be flush. We'll have can, we maybe, can we maybe do one block and we'll see what this looks like before we do a wholesale? We can do we can do fifth first if council yeah. wants. Maybe, yeah. we should, maybe we should do that and see what the... Cause I, uh, 
I, I, I think we just need to see how how traffic handles it, how the pedestrian traffic handles it. Sure. Maybe, maybe that's not the solution. I don't know. Yeah. But if we do. I like that. I'm just a little bit leery of because that's taken up. The grades still get walked on as part of the sidewalk here. Narrow, yeah, these, you're narrowing up your sidewalk quite a bit then. Yeah, well, you can walk on the. Uh, like on it'll the be. Oh yeah. It won't, well, maybe if you, did, if you did fifth, and then we then the public can see and we can. Yeah. Uh, while we're on the topic of trees on Main Street and stuff like that, um, as a the building permit or one of the conditions of the building permit that we had talked about prior to with Key Chev was that they had to replace that tree by their arch and stuff like that, and I, it's still not there. Can we put pressure on it that they, yeah. to meet their, their conditions of their permit, or if they don't, we install it in Yellow Park? We will do exactly that, and we are working with the CD that they provide the labor to do so. And uh, yeah, the CD is very gung ho on getting, getting the, the uh, nursery up to snuff and also helping us with our Main Street trees. But, but that tree was a condition as part yeah. of their permit process, so yeah. that's still outstanding that needs to be looked at. Yes. Councillor Friesen. Uh, we ordered flowers for the cemetery. Do you want to tell Mike so that he doesn't send the summer students out to... Is it, have you got two out there? Yeah. Well, three right now, but there will be two. For the summer? Yeah. Okay, so are you good with that or do you want me to talk to you? I can just yeah. let Mike know flowers are ordered. And we'll be probably getting them out there first week in June, but we'll let him know. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Moved by Councillor Dory, second by Councillor Morio, resolved that the handyman report for 2018 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen, resolved that the bylaw enforcement uh, officer report be put for March and April 2018 be received. Discussion? Councillor Sackle? Uh, I had a complaint from one of the neighbors over by, uh, <coughs> I guess, Mr. Flood's property that there's uh, a large contingency of vehicles growing there again. I'm just wondering if there's we're watching it, or maybe you know, going to do something about it because there seems to be we've taken a lot away. But apparently, there's a, another congregation coming back. If we can maybe make Ken aware of that, yeah, we because he has noticed that it has like there's somebody out there cleaning up over the past couple of weeks, but you know, this stuff happens, and yes, we can say it. It's a mess. Comes for freezing a lot of garbage, too. I I've been getting a few complaints that that back lane is a disaster. Councilor Sacco. You know, we said that the, uh, I can't remember how to state it, Thronus property has been cleaned up, but still there's lots and lots of garbage there, and I see an unintended dog, looks like, because I don't believe anybody's living there. I don't know if that dog can be removed. I, I don't, I don't know that it's, after, you know, um, animals that need help is looking after it, so it's being fed and watered, and I, I believe it'll be taken. It just seems so like it's, every time I've driven by, it's it's out in the open, and I just didn't know if it had any shelter, I didn't, yeah. you know, want to go into the yard or anything like that, it just seemed like it was, looked like it was abandoned, but... Yeah, someone is watching over it, and hopefully it'll be removed soon. Um, Paul might can aware of it. There's still some garbage there. Yeah, further back and behind, almost like they didn't get behind the dog in that area there. I had a conversation with Ken yesterday, I believe, on that, and there's been some more action uh, with the building uh, inspector with some of those other buildings. A lot of that stuff will be probably dealt with all at the same time on that. So, as I brought that same concern up that even though there was a massive cleanup, it still looks. Um, quite trashy back there so um, when they when he goes back with the building inspector um, there'll be some more further action 
deal with the, the house and the building. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Freeze, and resolved that the May 7, 2018 Recreation Committee meeting, meeting minutes be received. Discussion? I don't think we have anything to add, do we? I guess we directed uh, the recreation staff to uh, look into the uh, costs and logistics of uh, putting a female change room in there, so that'll be coming up for the 2019 budget. Um, it's probably something that we need to have in this day and age, and the, what we're providing right now just doesn't cut it. And uh, and so the staff is looking into that, and they're going to report back, and when they report back to us, we'll report back to you guys. Um, was, was, was there any discussion on uh, the letter that uh, uh, our Mayor McKenzie sent in regarding to the reserves of the uh, Recreation Committee? Oh, the, that's the district rec? Oh, okay. yeah. Sorry. So this was this was the internal oh, okay. town's internal. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Opposed? Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Freeze, resolved that bylaw 8 2018, being a bylaw of the town of Swaterford to regulate building within the town, be amended and read a second time. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only time I didn't look up. Management meetings. Any questions for Julie on our management meetings? Thank you, Councilor Memorial. I'll give you a few extra minutes to look at them. I see your minutes are quite a bit longer. That must tell me that your the changes that we or the changes that you said thus far looking for I was looking forward seem to be seem to be. Uh, I guess you guys are discussing stuff about the future, stuff of substance, so that's good to see. So, quite a bit longer. Okay. Council member and CR reports. We'll start with Councillor Memorial. Uh, this period was a uh, lot slower. Um, I attended um, stuff my uh, head into the uh, high school rodeo for a little bit this weekend. Um, crowds were down a little bit. It was windy so it was uh, not the greatest uh, to be a spectator sometimes but uh, they had it seemed like they were having a good time there so good to, for that committee to put that on and um, just uh, the occasional uh, repair expressing concerns and stuff like that and discussions that were generated on the newspaper article on councillors matters section um, um, some of them uh, were appreciative of now that we're being more vocal or we're expressing our thoughts uh, and concerns regarding the, the splash parks and the, the splash park uh, committee. So uh, there was appreciation on that, that uh, we're starting to be more uh, open uh, in relaying our support for it, but also uh, uh, indicating our concerns uh, that we have for that. So. I thought that the, the article was, was good, Councilor Moore. Thank you. Councilor Sackle. Yeah, not too much to report back either. I uh, didn't really have any committee meetings. I did, uh, along with Councilor Friesen, happen to attend the uh, play that took place that the high school put on. I was totally amazed on the job they did, right from the uh, background settings to the Lights. Lights to the acting, the whole presentation. If you, if you didn't get a chance to go, I highly recommend it for next year. Very entertaining, and you did a stand up job. Other than that, that's basically all I attended. That was your freezing. Um, last night I had a settlement services <clears throat> AGM and just a regular board meeting. Um, I don't know if you all want to know any of this. Stuff. I have facts and figures of her contacts and her clients and the countries they all come from. If you want to know any of that stuff, I have it here. Um, and the potluck, you were all invited 
you saw the ad on the 26th. And they are um, putting in a booth at the, uh, you know, June 13th. The rodeo? At the Folk Fest. Yeah, that's it, Folk Fest. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. <laughs> at the Folk Fest, they're doing a Canadian booth, and she's got some stuff to nice. give away and sell some Canadian beer. And they're having a meeting tonight, actually, too, and I think they just found out they got a grant for some money, so they'll be able to encourage some entertainment, and uh, it should be a good weekend. Uh, library meeting on Monday out in Benito. You can pretty much imagine how that went from mm -hmm. all of what's happening here. Um, Communities in Bloom, we had a meeting and uh, got some flowers ordered, and uh, we got a grant last year from the uh, foundation to build a, uh, it's like a cement, well I told you all that already, mm -hmm. around the uh, children's flower location at the cemetery. So we're hoping to get that done this summer. That's it. Thank you. Councillor Delorier. Um, May 2nd, I had the opportunity to attend the uh, fire department's uh, Wednesday night practice, went and checked out what they did, and, and uh, they were a uh, well-oiled machine. They were they work hard, and it looks like they have a bit of fun too, so uh, I think we're pretty lucky to have that bunch of guys and gals. So. Uh, Good, that was good. Uh, also on the 7th, we went, had our uh, rec committee meeting. You guys all get the minutes, so uh, pretty self-explanatory. Other than that, just been enjoying the nice weather. Councillor White. Hmm. Uh, I feel a compliment to Councillor uh, Deloria for inviting uh, the Deputy Mayor and myself along to meet with the fire department. It was certainly an impressive evening for me. Personally, to see how efficient and good they were. And on uh, May the 8th, I went to the Hero Club meeting, uh, looking to help uh, the club, looking to help people who need, and uh, that was very impressive. And it's just down the street here, about four buildings, if you have the opportunity. Everybody's welcome to stop in and see what they're doing, growing their own food, making their own food, and all having responsibilities. And our sport fish dinner, we just got the uh, financials finished $37,000 plus net going to the Swan River Valley as a whole, which is pretty, pretty fantastic. And on May the 9th, we went to Mental Health uh, Barbecue, the same similar bunch of people raising funds to help mental health. I should note an aside that the province has come out with some sort of declaration today where mental health is being recognized an extremely uh, integral part of all parts of business, and uh, they appear to be going to take a, a step, so maybe our safe house ladies will get some help there. And I went to the trails meeting sponsored by RISE and uh, Swan Valley Sport Fish. And uh, go to alltrails.com. And alltrails.com has everything you need to know throughout the world. And they are adding specific trails for the Swan River Valley, the ducks and porcupines. You can download them to your phone, to your app, whatever those things mean, and make maps from them. So it's uh, really remarkable. And part of that meeting also is the possibility of making uh, ATV trails, uh, an ATV trail group rather. So that's uh, still happening and it's still up in the air. On May the 10th at 9 in the morning, we met with the airport commission here. And we have the possibility of two new renters, one for sure, and one is negotiating still, which will bring funds to our community. I want to thank Derek and uh, Kenny uh, Patrick for coming in and talking about the safety issues and the cost of crack seal, which is significant to say the least. And on May the 14th, we went to the LP SAC meeting. They have 187,000 tons of inventory out there right now, which they're pretty excited about, but they're a little concerned with the weather, as we all are, being able to necessarily get back and get more access. But some of it's just forwarded out. That's right in the mill, I'm sorry. That's right in the mill yard, the 187,000 tons. It's an interesting point, being a bird guy, uh, with this really, really dry weather, the boreal forest, the ducks and the porcupine, is one of the few places left for waterfall ducks. We usually nest in the marshland, Minnedosa, around the periphery of the mountain, the duck mountains and porcupines may be only one of the two areas where they locally, where they find nesting habitat, they need water. And there's no water, not a lot of water left in the sloughs and the ponds up the drain. 
some of it hasn't been refilled. So it's a significant savings for waterfall having that mountain. And then when beavers become really important, because there's no beavers, there's no dams, and those dams are no ponds. So the birds really appreciate that one. And also came up with an issue of concern with our uh, airport from a safety perspective. Uh, the peas were planted there last year, and peas are a magnet for a lot of waterfall ducks geese. That's been uh, recognized and addressed, which is great. Fire concerns, well, have those. Uh, they produce both side yet OSB. I didn't realize that. I thought they went one way or the other. And uh, that's about it. I think our, our fire chief wanted to meet with us. Is there anything happening there? I said, a no, nobody responded out of the three members of the fire chief team. But we'll talk about that in camera, I guess. Thank you. Uh, for me, I guess uh, I spoke uh, most of the stuff already. The one of the uh, discussions that I had with the rate pair was the, uh, the issue with uh, the minutes from these meetings that we have that and how accessible they are to the public and, uh, and how quickly or, or not so quickly they, they come to, uh, to the public. And I just want to uh, remind any member of the public if they want to have uh, minutes, they can have these minutes probably within a draft copy within a couple days. But normally, uh, as we know, these minutes will come to the next council, which will be passed by resolution, and they'll be passed off to local media, who or print media, or whoever wants to uh, print it or, or uh, give it out to the public. So it's up to them to when they want to print it. And a lot of times in, 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 uh, in print media, they decide when they want to put it in there. So if they have the space uh, or the time or whatever, they'll print it. And I actually just uh, looked, the, I think it was last week that some of our neighboring municipalities, even some of their minutes were, you know, up to two months afterwards. So, if uh, I spoke with Julie about this, and if any of, of the public, uh, you know, comes to you and says, "Why can we not get these minutes sooner?" They can. They can get them with the draft copy, which will be available here in the next couple of days, and then once we pass them by resolution, they'll be on our uh, web page as well. So the information is there. Anybody can get it. Um, maybe we have not expressed that in the past, but we'll do a better job of, of doing that. But the information is there, so. Well, you're mentioning they can also go to YouTube and see it live. True, exactly. And, and a lot of people do, so we're, we're, we're enjoying that as well, so. Uh, Julie, anything from you? Um, I guess, I just need to know who wants to attend sure. the ACL, AGM. Did you guys decide on that? Is someone going to attend? Well, I didn't know, like, Glenn, usually, Glenn and I are usually attend it, but I, we haven't had a talk about that yet, so. So, you Glenn, that, who are you? ACL uh, okay. meeting. And then the <coughs> SBCTC, Swan Valley Communities that Carry, you're going to attend that one? I'm on that committee, so. Okay. Are they asking for the mayor to speak? I don't think so. Yeah, no, I just have to R yeah. RSP. I'll be there, and, and if anybody okay. else wants to attend, they're more than welcome to do so, if they want to come with me. You know, so. Okay. And um, I'm, there's a resolution coming up for attending the G5 meeting, um, but I'm also looking for any agenda items that you may have so I can pass them on to Minotonis. So if anybody has any Anything they want to have discussed at the next G5 meeting? Um, I do. Okay. Um, <coughs> at our uh, settlement services last night, um, Councillor Minish is also on that board, and he thought he or I could make a presentation to Minotaurus Bozeman and see if they would reconsider helping fund Settlement Services Board, because they have not in the last couple of years. He will like to be doing the talking. Okay. <laughs> long meeting, eh? No, because he said to me last night, do you want, do you think we should do this? And I said, you know, there's a G5 coming, why don't we just take it there? Okay. So, I can talk to him in the meantime. Okay, I will, uh... I'll maybe put a bug in case he's here again. Yeah, put a question mark behind it. And okay. Okay, 
Um, I'm still uh, doing some preparation for the June 8th AMM meeting as well. Um, I've sent in the host questionnaire, and um, that's about it. Okay. Later, yeah. Good. <clears throat> so, uh, sorry, Councillor. Well, I, oh, I see it. I never mind actually because I see it at lunch, but I see the ACL meeting was at June 5th, which is our council meeting, but it's at lunch, so just ignore everything I just said. Okay, you will. Okay, so moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Fraser, resolved that bylaw 8, 2018 being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to regulate building within the town be amended and read a second time. So you have there a decision uh, paper from uh, Derek. So any questions on that? Just so council knows, this is something that Ron brought to our attention after the first reading, saying that there's going to be a massive increase in, uh, in permits. So it's something that Ron caught. And, and here we are. Well, for me, I think that's, I uh, appreciate that coming forward here, so. Any other further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Moved by Councillor Sackle, seconded by Councillor Fries, and resolved that bylaw 8, 2018, being a bylaw in the town of Swan River, to regulate building within the town be read a third time and passed. Any further discussion? Recorded vote, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, so moved by Councillor Sackle, seconded by Councillor White, resolve that bylaw number 5, 2018, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to set the rates for taxation for the year 2018 be read a second time. So this is now the time for us to bring forth the uh, library um, uh, discussion that we had, as well as if anybody else wants to make any amendments or changes or additions to the budget. I'll open up for discussion, Councilor Sacco or Deloitte. I appreciate all the hard work by Bridge. My family uses the library. I would not want to see it go away. And I think, you know, one place that I may have made a mistake um, was with, with the redistribution. And I'd be willing to, uh, if you take what we gave last, 78000 roughly last year, and you, you use that same, and you factor in the uh, population redistribution, you would have. Keeping everything else equal, if their budget hadn't changed, we'd be on the hook for eighty-one thousand and one dollars. Plus, the, we were willing to give them a two percent increase that would bump it up to uh, roughly eighty-two seven hundred. I'd be willing to go to eighty-two seven hundred. That 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 takes into account the the change the shift in population, and it gives them a two percent increase. That's that's where I stand on that. You guys can. Uh, Okay, so any other discussion, Council Morio? Um, I can accept with Council Perry saying that. Um, but I also just want to point out that all our departments within the town got the same message that uh, it's minimal increases, if at all, and we had to look at services, and eventually there was cuts, and we had to find within and things like that. So um, we have to apply the same type of optics and lens to all the committees and uh, departments that we have and that we fund and uh, if that's uh, the number that comes out with it and stuff like that it is an increase from the previous year so um, it's not as much as what they're asking for so it's but it's still an increase from year to year so um, but uh, I can ex uh, accept and support that Councillor Glory's uh, redistribution of the pop account for the Population difference from the last census. Anyone else? I'm 100%. I'm all in favor of libraries. So what does that mean? Do you, do you want to give them the? Do you want to give them the amount they want, or do you want the amount you said? The amount I said. Phil, how much your cost? I, I don't know what to say. Um, I've got people on that board that are threatening to quit because we can't operate unless we have what they. Printed out. I mean, 82 is good. It's better than it was. It's still 
three thousand dollars less. I guess we could fundraise or something. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Well, it's logical. You voting against it then, or suggest an alternative? Alternative is the eighty-five. Census is then to uh, change it to the 82621. 700. Oh, isn't that what you said, Jason? 82621 is the actual number of the back of the napkin. I'm just doing rough calculations here, but uh, 82700. 82700. So, what does that change the RM, or do you care? Do we care? It does. That's up to the RM. We don't know that the RM wasn't going to give them the full amount. Yeah, we do. I had a meeting with David last night, and he's uh, talked to his reef, and uh, we'll like to hear from them if we don't match what they're. Well, okay. And, uh, and, and go I ahead. Think, you know what? This is. I, I think that what. Councillor uh, Delore has brought up is I think it's it's fair the assessment of what he he brought up and uh, the argument is fair so I, I think that in tune to what we have told all our uh, departments uh, and what their marching orders were they are not a part same. of our department they're, they're they're not employees of the town I realize that so then why refer to them as is equal to the town employees because they're not. No, but we have all the boards that we sit on. We knew what we were going into battle with, come for this budget. So I, I don't understand what. That well, we all sit on the on various different boards, and we all knew what when it came to this table, what we would be willing to accept and what we wouldn't. Um. Okay. Councilor Sacco, any comments? Not too much. I appreciate everything that they do, and I believe that they do work hard, and, and uh, I like all the programs they offer. Hopefully, they can hopefully they can make do with what uh, Councillor Dory suggests. I think uh, the number looks it looks looks presentable. Like I think it looks it looks logical. You know, as far as all of the rest of our budget goes, I think if there there is a, a shift. I know they they hold their Benito Library close to their heart, but maybe you know maybe instead of four days, maybe they got to be three days and, and look for cost savings. No matter what route they say it's it's busy, busier than it used to be. I, I don't know. I'd like to see it on paper, I guess, to know for sure. But I think uh, got to look for you know maybe having two separate boards or or one library that we take care of and they take care of theirs if they're not going to be happy with the numbers that we give them and uh, look at possible cost savings there. Council this money isn't necessarily going to salaries, it's going to a board, and the board will distribute the money as they see fit. Absolutely. This is Absolutely. It has nothing to do with salaries. It's with us at all. That's right. Other than we're giving the board money, and if they want to put it into TVs or computers or salaries, that's their choice. It's, yes, a, grant. Exactly. it's a grant that we're providing. And, and I just threw the suggestion out here. I'm only one member of council. If somebody else wants to make a motion to put a different number in, we'll vote on that. So the the eighty two seven just makes it uh, like twenty five hundred dollars less. Is that what you get? Rather than nine thousand. We got two percent plus the money. It depends on if Swan Valley West is coming in. Oh yeah. Not their same amount. Okay, so um, so l last meeting we passed a motion give the library the 79 number so we need to rescind that and vote on a new motion with this new number correct and then for the two bylaw readings should we put push those off to two to two weeks from now so that the number because it's going to affect all the numbers in there we um, we didn't do a motion specifically for the library no. did we not I thought no, we no. did no it was no. just we just um, it was in the budget. Budget. oh budget. Yeah. okay so um, the the financial plan is actually due to the governor today. So today is a deadline. Um, my suggestion is, you know, whatever change you want to do, we find somewhere in the budget to reduce um, by this amount. You know, if we're increasing, one we should decrease because we've had our public hearing. We, we can decrease, we can make changes, but we cannot increase. 
Otherwise, we will have to have another public hearing. Okay. Um, okay, Derek, go ahead. Since the, the first reading, which was last yes. council meeting, the, uh, the transportation budget did come down $20,000 due to the asphalt prices, the federal gas tax uh, is going to eat that up, that reserve, but the the operating uh, did come down to $20,000 on the transportation side. So cover that. So, okay. Councilor Duarte, do you have anything else? So, so if we were to so do this the, amendment, we're going the to number come right? because we're, okay. we're already bringing if we can make changes, like I said, we can decrease, but we cannot increase without having another public hearing. So the number, the twenty, thirty-five hundred or whatever out of the twenty thousand dollars will get go to the library, and then the other seventeen thousand will show a, a decrease. Yes, okay. and you'll notice from um, from the last uh, uh, copy of the tax levy bylaw, mm -hmm. there was a, a very small decrease in the mill rate. Councillor You had a question? No, I was just pointing out that uh, Derek had a um, okay. comment. Sorry. Okay, so we need a resolution to. No, we don't need a resolution for the library at all. Uh, is that is that uh, a consensus then? I'll make them happy. Okay, so then we will Thanks. make the amendments to the library uh, portion of the budget. Yeah, I would, um, on the second reading there, add the words as amended, if, if you could, okay. and um, initial it, please, and then move in the second. So what we're doing is we're amending the, the library budget number and amending the transportation number. Okay. Transportation yeah. already and that worked. actually oh. has already been worked in. Okay, so I'll read this again. So moved by Councillor Sackle, seconded by Councillor White, resolved that bylaw 5, 2018, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to set the rates for taxation for the year 2018 as amended, be read a second time. Discussion? So you'll be sending this in tonight after this meeting? Terry will okay. redo it and he'll be getting it in. We submit it online. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Moved by Councillor Sackle, seconded by Councillor White, resolved that bylaw 2 5 2018 being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to set the rates for taxation for the year 2018 be read a third time and passed. Recorded vote. Any more discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Sacco. Resolved that the Council's falls be hereby approved for payment. General Accounts from check number 22379 to number 22482 for a total of $240,656.60. And payroll account from check number 4217 to number 4224 for a total of $107,196.43. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Can I uh, is it too late to ask a question? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'll let you ask um, a question. The check to Centurion, I know, I know who that is, or but what is that is that for the build uh, the building inspection? He still goes by that? Like we contract him here, I'll get a check number. <coughs> so hard to see. Uh, 22413. Our building inspection is contracted through that? Through Centurion? Is yes. that who we pay? Okay. okay. Sorry, I wasn't really, sure what you were Well, I just, <laughs> I know we were written when he was doing the wellness, <laughs> I just didn't want this to be something to do with that. No. Okay. 
Moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved that the mayor, council member, and members, and the CEO be authorized to attend the AMM Parkland June District meeting held in Swan River on Friday, June the 8th, 2018. Discussion? All. Councillor Friesen. Did you find someone to sing All Canada? No, I haven't. We're still looking. You could do that. No, I don't think I could do that. Well, unless I could use my ukulele. Maybe sure. I could yes. That would be that awesome. That would be awesome. I'll, I'll keep looking. If anybody knows someone that sings. The girl that sings in the Legion and does a lot of singing. What's her name? Could be on a, one of the floats next year. Let me know when you think of it. She sings every Thursday. Okay. We could maybe bring some kids. I never go to school. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, okay. okay, that's an idea. Yeah. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Moved by Councillor Sackle, seconded by Councillor Freeze, and resolved that Mayor and Council and CEO be authorized, I can't even speak, be authorized to attend the G5 meeting being held in Minnetonas on June the 4th, 2018. June which? June 4th, 2018, in Minnetonas. Really? All in favor, discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. So Julie said she'd like to have uh, anybody forward any questions of discussion at that meeting. Moved by Councillor Sack. Question there. Sorry? Is everyone able to attend the G5 meeting? I also have to let her know. I'll be able to so attend. G June the 4th? June 4th. It's Monday. Monday, G5 in Minnetonas. Mm -hmm. Yes. Moved by Councillor Sackle, seconded by Councillor Friesen, resolved that the uh, Northwest Regional Library 2017 audit financial statements be received. Discussion? In favor? Opposed? Carried. Moved by Councillor Sackle, seconded by Councillor Friesen, resolved that a leave of absence be approved as requested and letter attached as Schedule A. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Moved by Councillor Sackle, seconded by Councillor Freeze, and resolved that the Superintendent of Works purchase a replacement order for the application of set ferric, sulfate, and the lagoon from Watertown Incorporated in the amount of $8,018. We have a decision paper there. All in favor or discussions? There was there was no one locally available. Uh, we did ask, but not fit uh, ninety horsepower. And we need we need ninety to be able to maintain a certain speed to be able to distrib distribute it, or well, we were varying speeds before, and which would cause them to basically change the application rate. Yeah, and that motor was wrapped out for the whole two days. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. <coughs> Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sacco, resolved that pursuant to Section 152.3 of the Municipal Act Council Board to Committee, they close the meeting to the public. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carry. 